Staying with us here at 730, all year long, Charlotte leaders in law enforcement have warned us of a public health crisis. It's an insidious threat running without control on our streets, and tonight we've learned it has no mercy for even the youngest victims. We're continuing our conversation on fentanyl and the impact it can have on an innocent child still to be born. Tonight we're introducing you to this little guy, Sammy, just two years old, but already he's facing a physical and cognitive disadvantage. The reason? His mom used fentanyl while pregnant. This didn't have to happen, and that's the biggest gut-wrenching part of it, is that knowing that this was all avoidable, and people just need to understand that. We're going to have more on Sammy's story in a moment, but first, many of us may be unfamiliar with just how potent fentanyl is. The Drug Enforcement Agency regards it as the single deadliest drug threat America has ever faced. It is 100 times stronger than other opioids like morphine, heroin, or oxycodone. People take fentanyl to help with pain, like cancer pain, that other medicine hasn't been able to help with. Others may use it to get high or to help with sleep. A lethal dose of fentanyl is just 2 milligrams. That is small enough to fit on the tip of a pencil. The fentanyl threat only getting worse here in Charlotte. See some of the numbers. In 2018, Charlotte Mecklenburg Police reported 134 fatal overdoses for the entire year. Halfway through this year, that number had already been exceeded. 137 people dead from this. Fatal overdoses, they rose 20% compared to last year. This can't be delayed any longer. The time is now. The goal of this campaign is to spark conversations in our city, in our schools, and amongst our friends and our families. Back in November, CMPD launched a new public awareness campaign called Street Pills Kill. It uses slang phrases like no cap and sus, targeting awareness in younger people. Kids are exposed to so much now, so many pressures, um, and it, this could be a new school experience for someone. Um, but sticking close to your kids, uh, finding out what's going on with them, talking with them, being available and being involved, that's what's really going to be key because when it's, it's posed to kids that, that there's a concern about their safety, it's not about not wanting them to have fun. But again, now a new disturbing discovery has emerged. Even the youngest also falling victim to the fentanyl crisis. A groundbreaking new study links babies with birth defects to their mother's fentanyl use. CBS's Stephanie Stahl explains this first of its kind of research. She spoke with the adoptive mother of two-year-old Sammy, a child now living with the consequences of a choice he didn't make. He do bubbles. Two and a half year old Sammy bubbles. loves bubbles. He was part of a new study from Nemours Children's Health that found congenital abnormalities in babies born to mothers who use fentanyl. You see the short nasal tip. He had a cleft palate. We're not using his last name to protect his privacy, but his mother by adoption and doctors wanted to share Sammy's story to help raise awareness. This didn't have to happen and that's the biggest gut-wrenching part of it is that knowing that this was all avoidable and people just need to understand that. Doctors were able to confirm that Sammy's biological mother used fentanyl when she was pregnant. He's among 10 babies covered in the Nemours study with birth differences related to fentanyl abuse. These babies are born with birth defects including a cleft palate that Sammy had. They have small head size, small size. They have hand differences. Sammy also had a club foot like other children. Dr. Karen Grip says it's known that fentanyl causes birth defects, but Nemours new study documenting the specific similarities indicates the emergence of a novel syndrome linked to the fentanyl epidemic. I'm concerned that there are many more undiagnosed patients out in the country that need to be recognized. For this study, researchers here at Nemours were able to eliminate other potential causes for the abnormalities. It was sort of like an aha moment. Genetic counselor Aaron Wadman first noticed the pattern and testing showed no genetic cause. It really seems to be pointing back to the fentanyl during the pregnancy. He loves music and lights and doing new things. Mom says Sammy doesn't walk or talk yet and depends on a feeding tube, but extensive therapy is helping. It's, it's hard as a parent to know that the odds are already 
stacked against my son, and I do everything I can every day to make sure that he doesn't feel that. Demi is among six of the babies in the study still being treated at Nemours. Mm. Uh, that mama hero, Stephanie Stahl reporting for us. CMPD urges you and your family to be vigilant as well as open and honest about drug use. Could be the difference between someone being saved or lost.